It's another Friday. Welcome to another Anazayo moment. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, we thank you for this awesome privilege again today to speak to a generation your word, to speak to a generation your heart, to speak to a generation your plan and your purpose. Lord, we ask that this episode will yet be another one that will bless lives, transform lives, awaken lives, and ignite lives. Lord, let it be that this word will be like fire shut up in the bones of everyone. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus in our midst. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Today we'll be looking at what I call the big three. Wow, it's an amazing topic you may say, but these are three major questions at three different seasons of my life that have shaped and helped me in the pursuit of God's plan for my life. I do trust that this will be a blessing to you as well. The big three. The first question the Lord asked me while I was in South Africa pastoring Winners Chapel International, Johannesburg, is a question I'll never forget. In the privacy of my study, he said to me, are you willing to lose your reputation for my reputation? In fact, I remember this question came uh, while I was taking my shower. So not in my study now, but while I was taking my shower. And he said to me, those who are willing to lose their reputation, I will give a reputation. And that transformed and has continued to transform my life. If you look at Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who should be our perfect example, we see that he was willing to lose his reputation. He said, not my will, but yours be done. This is the Son of God, had the authority and power to change times and seasons. He could call legions of angels at his disposal, yet he was willing to lose his reputation. And the Lord said to me, if you are willing to lose your reputation, I will give you a reputation. That was at a particular season of my life. The second of the big three questions the Lord asked me was while I was pastoring Winners Chapel International, Maryland, my last pastoral assignment. He asked me, he said to me, son, are you building a kingdom or are you building my kingdom? Matthew 6.33 is a popular scripture we quote, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Great! But it's not just any kingdom, it is his kingdom. He said, are you building a kingdom for yourself, or are you building my kingdom? What a question to ask a generation like the one that I belong to. Many times we are in the pursuit of what looks like God's plan for our lives, but really it could be that we're in the pursuit of gaining attention. Is it a pursuit of affection or is it a pursuit of attention? Then the third question of the big three that the Lord asked me was a bit more recently. He said to me, will you project Jesus Christ to the nations and to the generations? Will you project Jesus Christ? Now, not projecting yourself, but projecting Jesus Christ. While thinking of what our next episode should be, I got a release of the Spirit to share this intimate session with you. Because these are questions that the Spirit of the Lord is asking our generation. In a generation where there is a lot of attention, are we truly in affection? I want to focus on the last of the big three. Will you project Jesus Christ? Is it Jesus Christ you are projecting or is it self you are projecting? Even when you climb on the altar to minister, who do men see? <laughs> wow. This is a question that every one of us need to ask ourselves. I am bothered about the generation I belong to. I'm not sure we were really introduced to Jesus Christ the way we should have. It seems like the introduction we have is more towards a church or a doctrine 
or a way of thinking or a way of life. Jesus Christ is seeming to become extinct in our generation. People know about men of God, but not very many know about the God of the man. Jesus Christ is his name. He's standing at the door and knocking and asking if we would allow him in. But let me focus on the third one because this really hits home for this episode. How will Christ reign where we desire to reign? How will Christ be seen where we desire to be seen? How will Christ be heard where we desire to be heard? This is one of the big three that we want to deal with in this episode. Number one, we must call a generation to begin to look unto him and to know him. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. If you look at Hebrews 12, 2, it should be on your screen now. And Philippians 3, 10, now showing on your screen, we see that there is an importance in calling ourselves back to looking unto him. Who have you really modeled your life after? Who have you really looked onto to pattern your life? Are you patterning, patterning your life after a popular minister of the gospel? Or is your life being patterned after Jesus? As you look onto him, you will begin to know him. And so Paul the apostle had to look continually and consistently at Jesus Christ, and in doing so, he got to know him more. This is the first thing that you must note. It's time to begin to look unto Jesus. It looks simple, but how real and forgotten this is. It's time to begin to look unto him as the author, the anchor, the finisher, the concluder of our faith. I'm reminded of what the sage Kenneth E. Hagin would always say. He said, don't believe me because Kenneth Hagin says it. Believe what I say if the word of God confirms it. And so we, are, we have raised the generation in doctrine, we have raised the generation in expectation, but not raised the generation in focusing and patterning our lives after Jesus Christ. Do we even know how he thinks? Do we know how he talks? Do we know how he feels? Do we know how he acts? This is the big question that must be dealt with today. So look to him and know him, number one. Number two, copy him and imitate him. I want to read this out of the Amplified and it will make a lot of meaning to you. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, the Amplified version of the Bible. It says, therefore be imitators of God. Copy him, follow his example." As well, beloved children imitate their father. I remember hearing this a while ago as I listened to a man called Bill Winston. Copy him, imitate him. Because that's what well beloved children do. Don't claim to be Isaac Oedipo's spiritual son without copying Jesus. <laughs> we have our faults, we have our flaws, we have our shortcomings. But Jesus has none. In fact, if you are used to the breeding of dogs or the breeding of animals, you know that there is a lot of cross-breeding. Permit me to be very naked with you today. Most of us that you see uh, today, ministering the gospel, including myself, in one way or the other, still working on ourselves, we are not pure breeds yet. We are not pure breeds. He's the, he's, the, he's the direct image of the Father. If you want to grow, you want to develop, you want to get on fire and remain on fire, 
please let Jesus be your anchor. Let him be the one that you copy. Let him be the one that you imitate. Let him be the role model because he is the true breed. He's the pure breed. Yes, we are sons and daughters of God, but there is one pure breed. We, he's not a mixed breed. He's the pure breed of the Father. And so it's important that we copy him and imitate him. Number three, challenge to you today, as I challenge myself today, is to project him and to make him known. And that's why I said this last big three question out of the three different seasons of my life is the one we are dealing with today. He said to me, will you project Jesus to the nations and to the generations? This was the Holy Spirit speaking. Will you project Jesus? And it's so scriptural because what the Holy Spirit does is he magnifies Jesus. And so this, that, that early morning he said, will you project Jesus to the nations or the generations because what we have happening today is not a lot of projection of Jesus, but a lot of projection of self. Would we allow him to increase that we decrease? John chapter 3 verse 30. Project him and make him known. I'll read one last scripture to you and then we'll pray. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 23. But we preach Jesus Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But look at this. But we preach Christ crucified. This is a clarion call to my generation. A clarion call to the generation after. There has to be a return back to Christ. We are called Christians because we should be imitators of Christ. I want these big three questions to resonate but I want this episode as directed by the Spirit to focus on the third one. Before we can project Christ and make him known, we must first look to him and know him. After that, we must learn to copy him and imitate him. And then finally, we can project him and make him known. And so it all begins with knowing him. It all begins with knowing him. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, why don't we treat that first and foremost before this episode is over? Allow me to pray for you and pray with you. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Jesus, thank you for I am now born again and a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you pray that prayer, there'll be some information on, on your screen. We want you to be able to reach out to us and allow us to add you to our prayer list. The Lord bless you richly, in Jesus' name. These big three questions are questions that the Holy Spirit is asking each one of us. But for today, would you project Jesus to the nations and to the generations. Wow, what a question out of the big three. That's a question that you need to answer in all sincerity of heart. Hear me. Jesus is already picking men and women in this generation. He has no problem using you. You may be the only stumbling block to his using you. Till we meet again in the next episode, we want you to remain on fire. We want you to keep going through the word of God. I want you to make it a personal point of duty to study the word on a daily basis. Journal the things that he reveals to you when you study. Anything we teach you as ministers of the gospel, wait with the word of God. Because this must be the final authority. You can be a part of this great movement. Do all you can. 
to remain connected. Do all you can to keep praying and do all you can to partner. See you in the next episode. God bless. Bye-bye.